Okay, data center guys, here we are with the system dashboard again, because what we want to do is implement NTP, Network Time Protocol. Now understand that we have the capability of being able to support multiple pods, and in ACI, a NTP assignment can be implemented on a pod by pod basis or we can configure it for default. My intention here is to go ahead and configure a uniform NTP policy since we're only going to be using a single pod but in order to be able to activate that we're going to apply it to the concept of all pods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to fabric because NTP is going to be a fabric policy and since it can be implemented on a pod by pod basis it should come as no surprise that I'm going to to go to pod policies and under policies I'm going to find NTP or date time as an option. Now the way that Cisco orchestrates this is beautiful because we'll create a policy then we'll apply that policy into a policy group and then what we will do is we'll activate that policy group in a profile. So this is the order of operations that we're going to follow. So first of all I'm going to look at time and date and I'm going to right click here and make a new one. I'm just going to call it NTP policy and in this instance I am going to administratively activate it and I'm going to leave the, the verify server state and authentication all disabled. All I've done is to set up a router in my topology to act as a time server. That router is going to be located at the IP address 10.1.1.1. It will be my preferred time server and I'm going to need to communicate via the out of band infrastructure to get to it. Because remember 10.1.1.1 is going to be one of the addresses in my 10.1.0.0 slash 16 network infrastructure. I'll go ahead and hit OK and then I shall finish. Now what I need to do is I need to take this policy and I need to activate it as part of a policy group. Remember policy policy groups and then profiles. So to do this I'm going to make a policy group. Now this policy group I'm going to call it a let's see we'll just call it policy group because I'm not going to do multi-pod in this configuration and my option here we see time policy date time policy. I'm going to hit the down arrow and what there's my policy that I created. Now we're going to return to this when it comes to the route reflectors. Just remember that. But from the perspective of this, I'm now going to hit submit. Now, what has happened here is we've configured the policy. So if I go over and I take a look at the policy group and we take a look at it, it said, when we say show usage, notice it is not applied. Now what that means is, is that I have no time services running. So as an example, if I come over here and let's look at the APIC itself and let's just say show NTPQ, which is going to be the configuration. Nothing is set up. Nothing is actually running, nor will anything be running in any of the switches. So if I say SSH to leaf dash one and execute the NXOS one, two, three, four, five, execute the show NTP, and we'll go ahead and just say uh, peer status. Let's just do that. And hit enter. We have actually no sys time. So there's no domain configured for finding the system configuration so or the time configuration. So now what we want to do is we want to make certain that we take this policy group and we apply it. Now I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to take the passive path of least resistance because under profiles, what we're going to find is I have a default profile. And if we look at the configuration here, so all I'm going to do is highlight this. I'm going to go in and hit this default, the, the default profile. We see it's going to be all types, all blocks which means it's going to be basically for everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to apply the policy group to it and let's see if it actually applies. And we see beautiful output here. The policy usage warning tells me that this is being applied to APIC 1, LEAF 1, LEAF 2, and SPINE 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and let's see if this actually manifests itself anywhere. So now if I come up, and we may actually have to wait for this to synchronize just a little bit, but if I come over and say show NTPQ now, I'm hoping that I'm going to see some kind of output. Now the delay here, because it's not actually throwing anything out, is basically encouraging me because it tells me that it's in the process of building that configuration. And we see here now that I have formed an adjacency relationship with the remote device. Now it's a Stratum 16 device 
which is not good, which means it's infinite, which says the time is insane because we still have to synchronize to it. So, But ultimately, we should be able to see this device come up. Now, notice it says it's, it's basically saying it's initializing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and SSH to a leaf. So I'll say leaf1. And from leaf1 in XOS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all I'm going to do is let's see if we can do anything with NTP. So as far as the NTP command, let's say peer status and let's see what we see. And we see here that I have peered. Now the problem here is, is that I it's still stratum 16. So from the perspective of this, it's considered to be in, invalid and insane. But ultimately, it should stabilize, and we should actually be able to see this thing actually come up and say that the neighbor is going to be something other than 16. But it can reach it. In fact, just to verify, I'll ping 10.1.1.1, and we'll make sure that we actually have reachability, which we do. So it can communicate with it. And when we go in and we look at the configuration, let's say, let's try another show command. Let's that show, say show NTP instead of peer status. We'll just say peers. And we'll take a look at the configuration. And we do see here the setup. We said that it was going to be 10.1.1.1. It is going to be a time server. We're going to see, we said that we were going to prefer it. Are we going to use authentication? No. And we said that we'd specify this to function and operate inside of the management VRF. And we would employ that for normal operations. So let's see. Actually, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to be able to see it say that it's something other than insane. And um, that's going to require some time, I think. And it still says it's stratum 16. Let's take a look at the APIC. still says that it's synchronizing. I guess I need to double check and make sure that that device is indeed working as an NTP uh, host, which it should be, because if it isn't, then I've opened all manner of problems. Uh, 10, 1, 1, 1. That's not good. Let's see what's going on here. In XOS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me double check that. That can't be right. I cl I hit the ad hit it because it said it was the IP address of my config. So let's take a look at the session options here and telnet. But where is it trying to telnet to? Oh, it's telnetting through the term server. So let me do this. All right. So I'll just exit exit. I'll close this. It's connecting to a port on the term server, so it's an actual direct connection to the unit. I need to connect to the one that says term server. And I'll do this, and this, and then I'll actually enable my connection and do this. And from here, I'll say show NTP status, and we see clock is unsynchronized, so show run pipe include NTP. Oh, show run pipe include NTP. Let's see if he's set up as a time source. So we have NTP server. We have a clock period. So show run. Let's see what's going on with this thing. I just want to look at the time server configurations for it. And it means I need to be very mindful of the settings because remember, if the time server is messed up, you can actually really, really impact your configuration. So I'm actually connecting to an external time source and show NTP status and show NTP neighbor, not neighbor, uh, no, um, just it's going to be association. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So NIST, it's a stratum one device. Show NTP status. My time is saying it's unsynchronized, so I'm not able to 
learn from it. So that so the time clock is correct. The it is re reducing it or or representing it as a stratum. So let me do this uh, show clock. I just want to see uh, do show clock. And let's look at the configuration here. So it's July 29th. Uh, 2018. So I'm going to say NTP master stratum 1 and show NTP status and see it still says the clock is unsynchronized. So I have a synchronization issue with the device that I'm getting time from because I wanted to make certain that that time was indeed good. Now that the Master, I basically said that I'm authoritative as a time source, which is going to strain, change my stratum to one. So now let's see what ended up happening being learned in the queue here. Notice my time server, I'm learning it from a stratum one device. And when we start looking at the implementation and I say SSH to say, we'll go ahead and just connect to a spine. Let's say spine dash one and in XOS one, two, three, four, five. When I look at spine one, and I say show NTP, and I say peer, uh, st is it stat? No, not statistics. Peer, that's right, show NTP peers. We should be peered with the configuration, and when I say my peer status, that's going to tell me what I'm learning from my neighbor and what my neighbor information has and he says he is a stratum one device so yes that's working so the configuration was actually propagating and if I come over here and I say show clock what we should see here is is that the clock it should be synchronized and functional on the configuration so this is all very important this is all very very useful and it's all deployed through the use of these policies policy groups and profiles. Now my next task is, is I want to go ahead and configure BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. And I'm going to enable MPBGP by making Spine 1 a route reflector. Now Cisco's made changes in the GUI. It used to be in different places but the thing is is ultimately we're going to end up going to another tab. In fact we'll go to the system tab to configure the policy but we still have to come back to fabric fabric policies under this policy group to apply what it is we're going to configure there. So with that being said I'm going to go ahead and stop this portion of the recording and when we come back in the next video we're going to look at the creation of the MPBGP peering relationship by creating a route reflector and again we're going to do that via policy. I'm Terry Vinson. I'd like to thank you for learning data center and I'll see you in the next video.